Hi, Ms. Cohen here, and welcome to another blog with the Cohen Review. Today, we're going to be discussing Erickson's psychosocial development stages. Promoting effective nursing care is based on a thorough understanding of human development across the lifespan. Erickson's psychosocial developmental theory is like a story of how we grow as individuals. Imagine that you are on a journey and each stop you have a small challenge to solve, like sharing toys or making friends. If you do well, you learn something good about yourself, like being kind or brave. There are eight stops on this journey and completing each one helps you become a happy and strong person. So why is this important for nurse practitioners, you may ask? To provide effective care, nurses must understand their patient's developmental stages. A psychosocial assessment helps the nurse determine whether the patient is in mental health or mental illness state. Mental health is a state of well-being where one can deal with physical stresses of life, work productively, and contribute to their community. Mental illness shows up as behaviors that bother a person and can change how they see the world, affect their daily life, and mess up with their judgment. People with mental illness often find it hard to fit in, display maladaptive behaviors, and struggle to function normally. Let's talk about stage one, which is zero through 18 months. As you can see in the picture, it's all about that mom and the baby. It's learning to trust the world through mother, who is the significant relationship in this stage. And the question becomes, can I trust the world? And the outcome being hope. During this stage, the infant develops trust or mistrust based on the quality of care and responsiveness of their caregivers. Key elements include dependence on caregivers, usually the mother, for basic needs such as feeding, development of attachment and bonding. It's the exploration of the environment through sensory experiences. This is the beginning of language development. Positive outcomes include the development of trust, hope, the infant feels secure, safe, and protected. Negative outcomes include the development of mistrust. The infant feels neglected, abandoned. This stage sets the tone for the future development. And a balance between trust and mistrust is essential for healthy growth. Stage 2. This is from ages one through two years. This is about autonomy versus shame and doubt. As you can see on the picture, mom is toilet training the baby. The significant relationship is clearly the parent who assists with guides with this. The question becomes, is it okay to be me? And the outcome being will. During this stage, children develop control over motor skills, uh, eliminative functions such as pooping and autonomy. The child is growing physically, becoming more mobile, and discovering their many skills and abilities. Such skills illustrate the child's growing sense of independence and autonomy, such as toilet training. Success in this stage will lead to the virtue of will. If children receive encouragement and support to become more independent, they will develop confidence, improving their ability to thrive. They will feel comfortable making decisions, exploring their surroundings, and maintaining self-control. If children are overly controlled or criticized, they may begin to feel shame and doubt in abilities. This can lead to a lack of confidence and fear of trying new things. Stage three, ages three through six years old. This stage is about initiative versus guilt. In the picture, you see that the children are exploring, they're using new tools such as art, and they're making new things. And the significant relationship is the family. The question, the existential question is, is it okay for me to do uh, or to move or to act this way? And the purpose is the outcome. During these years, children are lively and experience rapid development. Regular interaction with other children at school is a significant event. And so is play as it allows children to explore their interpersonal skills through initiating activities. At this stage, kids will want to begin and complete tasks on their own when encouraged. 
they learn to take charge and have more control over their surroundings, which fosters a sense of purpose. If significant relationships like family discourage the pursuit of independent activities or criticize their efforts, children may feel guilty about their desires and initiatives. This could potentially lead to self-doubt and lack of initiative. Success at this stage leads to the virtue of purpose. Failure, such as through criticism or control, will in turn cause children to develop a sense of guilt. Stage 4, ages 7 through 10 years. This is when school its really important, and sports as well. The significant relationship becomes neighbors, school, and the question is, can I make it in the world of people and things? The outcome being competence. As you can see in the picture, this kid is very proud of having accomplished an A on a class. During this stage, children learn new skills and widen their circle of influence. They compare themselves to others and develop feelings of pride and accomplishment if they do well. If they struggle, they may develop feelings of inferiority. Important events include school, peer relationships, extracurricular activities. Outcomes include feelings of pride and accomplishment, competence. Success is seen when the kids are encouraged by their parents and teachers. They start believing in their own abilities. But if they don't get that support, they may feel doubt on themselves. Finding a good balance at this stage helps kids feel confident handling tasks. At the completion of the stage, it is essential for kids to feel good about themselves, which sets them up for success in their personal and professional lives. Stage five, ages 11 through 19 years, your teens. This is identity versus role confusion. Look at the picture. It's all about social relationships. They're starting to find themselves. They change their hair colors. They're changing their outfits. They're trying to find themselves. Who am I? Who can I be? The outcome being fidelity. This stage focuses on teenage years, highly influenced by social relationships, such as peers, role models, with a sense of self-exploration and identity. During this stage, teenagers are faced with the challenge of developing a sense of self. They form their identity by examining their beliefs, goals, values. Teenagers try to understand themselves and find their place in the world. Teens who manage to get through this tough time will come out of it with a strong sense of who they are and the ability to stick to their values no matter what challenges come their way in the future. Fidelity is the outcome. If they succeed, they will have a strong sense of self and be better prepared to face the challenges of becoming an adult. If they fail, they may feel confused and unsure of where they belong. Stage six, ages 20 through 44 years old. This is about intimacy versus isolation. Look at this picture, it's where people are meeting each other. They're starting to build this romantic relationship. The significant relationship in this stage is friends and partners. The question is, can I unite myself with someone else? And the outcome being, Love. During this stage, young adults are challenged to develop close relationships, a mate, the union with another person, social inclusion, and love. This stage is all about forming intimate relationships. If successful, they will experience love and connection. If not, loneliness and alienation. Completing this stage fosters solid relationships and a sense of community. Stage seven, ages 45 through 64 years of age. This stage is about generativity versus stagnation. As you can see in the picture, it's about family taking care, the outcome being care, parenthood, working together as a family. The significant relationship is that household, the workmates, such as mom and dad. And the question being, can I make my life count? 
Middle-aged adults often strive to make a positive impact on the world by working to benefit others and nurturing things that will last beyond their lifetime, such as raising children, parenthood, or creating positive change in their communities. It's all about care. Success leads to feeling of usefulness and accomplishment, while experiencing failure can leave us feeling disconnected from the world. Being proud of your accomplishments, watching your children grow into adults, and developing a sense of unity with your life partner are important accomplishments of this stage. Stage eight, 65 plus. You can see grandma, grandpa looking at the horizon, reflecting on life. That's the main event. The significant relationship is humankind, my kind. And the question is, is it okay to have been me? Did everything go the way I wanted? And the outcome, such as we see with elderly, it's all about wisdom. In later life, people look back and they think about their life choices. They may feel good about what they've achieved or they may wish that they had done things differently. Success at this stage means looking back with few regrets and a general feeling of satisfaction. These individuals will attain wisdom even when confronting death. Failure equals despair. Failure at this stage can lead to feelings of having wasted life and people may experience many regrets. It can leave them feeling bitter and hopeless. In conclusion, Erickson's eight stages of psychosocial development provide a comprehensive framework for understanding human growth and development across the lifespan. Each stage presents a unique challenge and opportunity for growth and successfully navigating these stages is crucial for developing a strong, healthy, fulfilling life. By understanding and applying Erickson's eight stages, we can better support individuals in their developmental journey and promote positive outcomes across their lifespan. The nurse practitioner boards may give you an example and ask you to identify the stage. So please review all the eight stages, understand the events, significant relationships, existential questions, and outcomes for each as reviewed in this presentation. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Have a wonderful rest of your day.